Hey everyone, it's Lindsay from Spiro here today with part two of our new at home mini series talking about how robots are like the human body. Like I mentioned last week, I'm a mechanical engineer here at Spiro. So today I'm gonna to cover how specific parts of Rover are just like your skeleton, muscles, and even your feet. So let's get started. Okay, so the first question is, what is mechanical engineering? What do I do at work? Um, well, mechanical engineering is kind of dealing with everything you can see on the robot, like all of the plastics um, coming together, um, the gearboxes, the motors, um, all of the sensors, and just making it all fit um, and work together so that not only does everything that we want it to do, but uh, that it also looks great and that it'll survive uh, when you kids drop it or throw it around the room or whatever you want to do. And the main thing is designing the robot to make it move. So in our case with Rover, we have two motors that are located in the back. So what I did is I picked out the motors and we decided we wanted Rover to be, you know, a certain speed and we wanted it to be able to climb up uh, different hills and be able to go outside. So we chose a motor um, in order to do that. And a lot of times the motor just spins way too fast. So if if we just had a motor, it'd probably go like 40 miles an hour, which is way too fast. That's like a car like a real car, like when you're driving in the car. So what we do is we also make a gear train to kind of slow it down so that we make it only go, you know, a couple miles an hour, which is what Rover does now. And it also helps to make it a little stronger so that it can start climbing up hills and be able to do that. And then another big thing I do is I work with all the other different engineers to be sure that everything we have inside of here is what we need to make it work. So that's working with electrical engineers who work on the uh, PCB there, okay? Working with firmware engineers who code the robot to be able to do what it what needs to do, and the software engineers that do the app in order to make that work. And I also work uh, with the industrial designer uh, who has a specific idea of how it looks. We kind of talked about that last week, but I kind of bring them back to reality and be like, hey, we need it to be able to run into walls so we can't necessarily have that thing right so that's what I do, that's what mechanical engineering is, and that's what I do at Sphero. All right, so let's kind of talk about how the different parts of the human body are similar to parts on Rover. And the first thing we can start with is the skeleton. If you guys remember, that's your bones inside your body, and that's what helps make you move. So I have a whole bunch of bones in my hand, um, all along my arm, and they're all joined together, and they kind of make me move in different ways, just like that. So it's kind of similar to what uh, the motor does on Rover, and that is the basis of what makes the robot move. I don't know, I'll try to go in there, but this, these, if you look at your Rover, um, these little silver guys, those are the motors, and they're basically spinning really, really fast, um, and they go forward and they go backward. And what we do is we convert the spinning into forward motion. And I'll kind of get into what does that later. But you can kind of find motors basically everywhere in the world. Probably your parents' car. Well, they, your car, parents' cars do have motors. If they don't have motors, then it's not a car. Your garage door opener has a motor. Even if you guys have a little electric toothbrush, that has a really, really tiny motor in there. So it, it kind of makes the world move, if you will. And um, that's similar to your bones in your body and your skeleton. Okay, so when you think about the muscles in the human body, they kind of are what give you your strength. And you know how if you have really big muscles, you can lift really strong things. Um, and they kind of they connect to your bones um, and then have the skin on top of it. So that helps you to be able to like lift things or run fast. I know some of you guys are super fast, so your muscles help you run fast. And we have something similar in Rover that's like that. And a lot of robots have this too. Um, it's called the gearbox. And if I open it up there, it's this guy here. Okay, so if your robot is running, you can kind of see all these things spinning really quickly. And so what we do is our motor comes way too fast and it's not very strong. It doesn't provide a lot of strength to the robot, if you will. So what we do is we make this gearbox and it almost acts like muscles where it, not, it will slow down the robot, but it will make it stronger, if you will, so that it can go climb up really steep hills. It can accelerate quickly, which means it can just go really fast from the start. And just like with muscles, the bigger the gearbox, the stronger the robot is. So our gearbox is actually kind of small compared to other different robots where they are lifting really, really heavy things. Like if you think about robots in factories and stuff and they're lifting boxes or they're 
lifting pieces of cars onto it. Um, they have to be really strong. So their gearboxes are really big. So yeah, that's in a nutshell how our gearbox is similar to the muscles on the human body. Similar to your feet, I would show you mine, but I'm not that flexible. Um, they're connected to your ankles. And what we can think about do 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 is our feet are like the treads on Rover and our ankles are kind of like um, these wheels we have, okay? So the wheels, you can see they have little crevices in here and there's matching little crevices on the tread so that they're interlocked together. And whatever movement that the wheel does, the tread will do as well. So with your ankle, you kind of have whatever movement your ankle does, your foot will follow, similar to that. And another thing with the treads, as we kind of talked about this last week, is they're designed to help get more grip, um, kind of like your feet are designed in order to grip the ground properly uh, so that you can walk and run, um, climb even, uh, if you guys are good climbers. Uh, so yeah, we, we designed it so that um, there's enough friction, as what we call it, um, in order to climb up you know, tall and climb, like, you know, climb up hills or go on your gym floor and be able to turn um, so that you're not just spinning everywhere. And that's, you know, in a nutshell, how the treads and are similar to your feet. And then the wheels here and their little grooves are similar to your ankles. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back next Friday with another video. And if you have any questions or comments or have some ideas for future videos, uh, please tweet us at Spiro. Bye now.